So some of you as clinicians are doing breath testing and you've already adopted breath testing into your practice to look for bacterial overgrowth. It's great because you're, the breath test can tell you how to treat patients. We now know that hydrogen on the breath test can actually predict rifaximin responses as an example or antibiotic responses and that a different course of antibiotics might be needed if you have methane, for example. We don't know how to treat hydrogen sulfide yet because it's a new test and we're hoping to learn more as time goes on. But how does IBS Smart fit into all of this? Well, it's not really any different. If you want to tell your patient why they got all of this, why they got their IBS and the bacterial overgrowth that's part of IBS, then the IBS Smart test, by measuring and finding elevated levels of anti-CDTB and anti-vinculin, tell you that. Food poisoning caused it. They got to be careful not to get food poisoning again and caution them with travel. It's not going to tell you how to treat, but it gives the patient clarity as to what, what was the origin of all of this for them. And so I think that's where it fits into your practice is to give you that clarification of what is the, the, the source. Because remember, SIBO can be caused by other things. Adhesions don't give you positive antivinculin and anti-CDTB. Narcotics, which can cause overgrowth, don't give you that. So having the positive antibodies gives you some clarity as to why the overgrowth might be there.